This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. I'm gonna talk about my top three portrait lenses for Sony in 2021. I'm also gonna tell you which ones not to buy. I've been shooting Sony as my main camera system for about five years now, so I'm kind of an OG. And in 2021, these are my absolute go-to, what I consider to be the best portrait lenses you can buy for the Sony mirrorless system. Let's start with my favorite focal length for portraits, and that's the 85 millimeter. Trust me when I say this, it hurts me to my core, but I can't recommend the 85 G Master in 2021. The lens known as my bread and butter. 85 millimeter lens is what I call my bread and butter lens. This lens has sentimental value to me because I've made so many videos coming up in YouTube using it, but I just can't recommend it anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a great lens, but mine right now is currently sitting with Sony Pro support because somehow the lens mount warped and became extremely hard to just get the, the lens on my actual camera. On top of that, the lens hood was falling apart. The focus was never blazing fast. It was noisy and the lens still cost $1,700. With that said, the best 85 millimeter you can buy for Sony, in my opinion, is the Sigma 85 1.4 Art. I'm talking about the new version. It's smaller, lighter, sharper, has faster autofocus, and it's $500 cheaper than the G Master. Compared to the old 85 art lens, it's amazing how small Sigma made this 85 millimeter, and it balances so well on these alpha cameras like the Sony A1. I've had nothing but a great experience with this lens since it was released. If you want something on the cheaper side, the 85 millimeter focal range, I would recommend the 85 1.8 hands down the best option at $600. I compared that with the G Master, made a whole video about it, and it's actually sharper than the G Master. That's the one if you're on a budget. Although I'm usually not a fan of the 50 millimeter focal range, I can go as far to say that the new 50 millimeter F1.2 is my favorite Sony branded lens that is currently available. There is something about how this lens renders at F1.2 that makes it it just using it, it's addicting. I don't even know how to explain it, but I guess it's the combination of the depth and the separation, you know, the background blur, being able to make an image look dreamy with the soft background blur, while still being able to maintain the extreme level of sharpness. If Sony had made their 51 II the same size as the Nikon 51 II, I would be hesitant to buy it because look at this monstrosity here but they made it almost the exact same size as the 85 1.4, which makes it even an easier decision for me. If you can't afford this $2,000 lens and you like the 50 millimeter focal range, I would say avoid, avoid the 51.8, the cheap one, unless you're just starting out. It's $200, it's, but it's not a great lens. It just, it just isn't. The 55 1.8 Zeiss, this little lens right here, it's small, lightweight, and it's extremely sharp, but it's still kind of pricey on the used market. You'd be surprised. This is my oldest Sony lens, and it has held up well throughout the years. I don't think I'll ever sell it, to be honest. The old 51.4 Sony Zeiss has beautiful optics, but still, on the pricey side, it's over $1,000, and it's big and heavy like the G Master. In my opinion, at that point, you might as well get the Sigma 51.4 and save four or $500 at that point. So let me tell you about a major announcement from my sponsor today. That's Professional Photographers of America, that's PPA. Like I said before, they offer many benefits, like $15,000 worth of equipment insurance. That's included with your membership. Well, I'm here to tell you that the insurance policy just got better. Starting May 1st, you will get full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible or repair your equipment with a flat $50 deductible. Honestly, like how can you beat that? A full replacement equipment insurance policy plus data loss recovery services plus education all included in the membership. Any two of those things would cost you more than the price of the membership itself. Seriously, take a look at the link down below in the description and use the code for a discount on your membership. 35 millimeter is one of my must have lenses for portraits. And I love those people in the comment section that say 35 millimeter is not a portrait lens. I, I love it, I love it. It's This is an environmental portrait lens. I own the OG 35 1.4 Sony Zeiss, the $1,500 one. 
and the 35 millimeter 1.8. I even have the Sigma 35 F 1.4 art, but I chose the 35 1.4 GM over everything else. In my testing, I could not tell the difference between what image was shot on the art and the GM. But one thing I could tell the difference on is the size and the weight of these two. I'm the kind of person that looks at lenses with a pros and cons and put them on imaginary scale. The Sony 35 F 1.4 G Master is the smallest and lightest of all the other F 1.4 lenses. And optically, it's nearly perfect. For me, it's an easy choice. But if money holds a lot of weight on your imaginary scale, you're gonna be extremely pleased with the new Sigma 35 F 1.4 R. If you don't care about having that F 1.4 aperture or you want the smallest lens possible, you're gonna be happy with the 35 F 1.8, which was my go-to 35 millimeter for a long time. Gerald Undone and Philip Bloom, I believe, both used the 35 F 1.8 on their main camera that they shoot their YouTube videos with. I am someone that absolutely loves the 135 millimeter range for portraits and Sony makes it incredible 135 millimeter 1.8 G mask. This is arguably the best Sony branded telephoto prime you can buy right now. The compression matched up with the F 1.8 aperture. It's gonna give you a 3D looking image and at the end of the day, it's gonna make your image look unique. The only reason why I don't own this amazing lens is because I own the the 200 millimeter F2 Canon. And whenever I get my fix for that 3D cutout look, I reach for this one. When speaking of the best portrait lenses, it would be a crime not to recommend the 70 to 200 F2.8 lens. With the 70 to 200, you cover all your bases. The Sony 70 to 200 2.8 G Master costs about $2,600. But here's the thing, my copy had some back focusing issues along with others out there on the internet. You can find forums on the internet about that or watch my comparison video between the Tamron and the Sony. You can see what I'm talking about. I sent this into Sony Pro Support and they recalibrated it for me. It's been giving me tax sharp results so far, but at that price, should this be happening? <laughs> you know, Tamron has a lens out there for less than half the price, the 70 to 180. It gives you almost the same range it's hard to recommend the GM if you aren't needing a professionally built lens. You're gonna have to make this decision for yourself. But the Tamron offers the, obviously the most bang for buck and with the high resolution cameras, 180 versus 200, you can just crop in a little bit, especially you know using A1 for example or any other high resolution camera. At the end of the day, there are other great lenses. So many different lenses, especially from third parties that I didn't mention, but I have probably never used them so I can't really talk about them. I hope this video helped you to make a decision on your next portrait lens purchase. Drop a sub if you made it to this point because obviously, obviously we're vibing here. I drop two videos a week, photography related, maybe video, if things get a little spicy. I'll see you in a couple of days. My flash is at 5.8 power. I'm shooting in high speed sync. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, keep doing your thing. <laughs>